I've sung many Puccini roles. Musetta, Manon Lusco, Mimi, Giorgetta, Liu, Chocho San, Tosca, and of course Minnie. Which one was my favorite? Oh, that's difficult to say. They were all my favorites because at the time that I did them, I immersed myself totally in the woman. Um, I read her texts, I learned her notes, and I, I became this woman for the time that I was, uh, was the character and doing the role. Sometimes the character was so demanding and so dramatic that she would take over my life for a long period after I had sung her. I always got a chance to sing her again. Different theater, different casts, always a different situation. And the lady stayed the same, but not quite the same. That was the challenge and that was the joy. Puccini loved his women. He wrote for this woman child. Uh, it was difficult. Sometimes Liu, Chocho San, certainly uh, not roles that I, I looked like. With the help of good makeup and wonderful wigs and costumes, I've, I've had wonderful fun on stage in both roles, especially Chocho San. Minnie was a joy because right at the beginning of the rehearsal period at the Met, with all these wonderful people, Giancarlo Del Monaco, fantastic conductor, uh, Slatkin, uh, Placido Domingo, Cheryl Milnes, they were all around me and made me feel, I think, like I sort of was Minnie. I sort of looked like the girl in this little book that uh, Dick Voitok, the coach and pianist at the Met, brought to show me at one of the first rehearsals. Uh, she had blonde hair and blue eyes, and I thought, well, we're off to a good start. And with this cast and conductor and the possibility of doing this piece in, in, in a theater like the Metropolitan Opera, I, th I thought I'd hit the operatic jackpot. And it was like that for the next four to six weeks. The rehearsals were amazing. Working with someone like Giancarlo, he did this piece straight up. He had, uh, I think, the support of the entire house, especially the director at the time, uh, Joseph Volpe. Uh, Joe didn't want Fanchula del West on the moon, so Giancarlo brought a very, very, uh, I think, close to the heart of most Americans who see the Old West that way, at least at that time, and Europeans sort of remember all the old films. It might have been a little sentimental, but it was certainly open, uh, honest emotion. John Carlo can do that, and with Leonard Slatkin's support, uh, he conducted us in a way that uh, avoided our getting too heavy-handed on a big stage with a big orchestra in a big house. It was a dangerous piece, exciting, but dangerous. There were dangerous things that happened. There were dangerous souvenirs that remain with me today. One on my leg, where I kicked a chair at my opening entrance. Uh, the chair stayed on my leg and it didn't break it, but I still have the scar. I have the scars of several uh, sizzling bullets that popped out of the back of the rifle that I fire at the entrance which always managed to find their way into my décolleté and sizzled around in there and left a couple of nice scars. But it's nice to look at them from time to time and remember what I was doing at that moment. I was getting ready to burst into the saloon, screaming and shooting my rifle. And, and be, what an entrance. I mean, how many times in your life do you get an entrance like this? Uh, it's often asked, uh, do you feel that La Fanchula del West is more American or more Italian? At the moment that we did this piece at the Met, I felt she was totally American. Puccini was an Italian. Um, he wrote in the Italian genre, his genre, the beloved Puccini genre, genre. And when I was in Italy, I did have a situation where suddenly the Italian element came in full force. It was another production. Um, they carried in in the first act during the Bible scene, or wanted to carry in in the first act in the Bible scene, a Madonna, a huge Madonna, in a blue dress, kneeling, praying, on a pallet, sort of like uh, in the festival of Santa Agata. 
I, I just tell them, Ayanna said, I can't do this. I, I said, I have nothing against her, the Madonna. But I don't think that this was uh, Minnie's intention. The role had become so personal to me, uh, and it had nothing to do with John Carlos' original staging for me in my mind. It had something to do with the identification to Minnie as an American figure, reading to all of her minors uh, and, and the, the cowboys that came into the saloon from both versions of the Bible. Totally open, non-denominational, and expressing to them the kind of salvation that she f finds in the Bible for every one of them. So for me, that Italian element had to uh, be left on the wayside. I, I, didn't, I didn't want the first act uh, to have this Madonna in there. The director was not too happy about it, but uh, it, I think, made the scene, which was very clean, very open, very honest, and uh, represented sort of an American way of thinking, at least on paper, for me. Um, that's what Minnie was all about. She was uncomplicated. Uh, her great love, I think, was Dick Johnson. I think it was love at first sight. I think it was her sexual awakening. The entire second act was, was one of those situations where you see a woman who is no longer young, I certainly wasn't a teenager, we never decided on actually how old Minnie should be. John Carlos said, you know, this woman could be mid-30s, mid-40s, but she's never really given her heart to anyone. This was, for her, uh, the confrontation with Dick Johnson, I think love at first sight, the real kind of love. She might have kissed a man earlier in her life. I don't think that she came from any sort of a virginal background, my gosh. Her parents were two rather wild characters. Uh, her father was a card shark and her mother was a fandango dancer down in Soledad. So what had this kid seen as she grew up? Uh, she certainly wasn't sheltered. But I think in terms of giving her heart to a man, let alone her body, uh, she hadn't done that yet. And I think true love came into her life with Dick Johnson. Wouldn't you know it? A highway robber, uh, a man of really... Uh, bad credentials, but it was the first love of her life, and then the big kiss in the second act is the first soul kiss, the first real kiss, and John Carlo had a way of staging all of this so that it led easily to something that can be sometimes a very uh, comical moment, stage kisses, uh, especially passionate ones in verismo pieces like Fanchula. The music leads you into doing it, but you've got to find a way to do it believably. And he let us do that. There were things that went on in that cabin that were hair-raising. The kiss was not hair-raising, but my hair ca catching on fire at one point was hair-raising. We knocked out... Uh, I didn't. Uh, I was down on the floor beside Placido, Cheryl came down to raise him up and pointed his pistol at his face, as he had done in all the rehearsals. At this, at this particular moment, however, the pistol was too close and knocked out one of Placido's teeth. It was one of those moments, live, by the way, there was no stop, uh, saying stop the performance. We were up there singing. Placido l let this piece of tooth rest on his um, lower lip until the scene was finished. It was a wonder he didn't swallow it. It's a wonder we didn't hurt him any more than that. Uh, we felt bad about it. Uh, he sort of laughed it off, but it was one of those minutes in Fanchula that you'll remember all your life. You can't pay for a minute like that. Many beautiful moments that uh, remind me of this piece as being one of the roles uh, from Puccini that do remain a favorite in my mind. Um, there's no other role like her, actually, in my entire repertoire. Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, and to this day, I, I, I can't remember having that much fun on a set. And with all the scars and, uh, and bruises, um, it was always... It, it came to an end in the evening with that feeling that you'd given 150% of yourself, but you'd taken at least another 150 home with you, so you came out even. Um, it's a role that demanded an awful lot of concentration in the moment that you did it. There were vocal things that I possibly did on stage that were not kosher, but 
they didn't hurt me at the time and somehow came out of the moment. I wouldn't recommend them. When I hear myself singing it now, I say, oops. But in the middle of the, uh, of the second act, when you are fighting off the sheriff, your hair is probably caught on his badge for the umpteenth time and he rips out a handful of it. Always happened. Cheryl couldn't do anything about it. It was his costume, it was the badge, and it was my hair. Um, that you tend to then in, invest vocal things that you probably would have thought differently about had you been standing still and doing a recording. But we were not able to do that. It was live and it was the cameras were running. Um, it happened almost every evening, though. There are just moments in the second act when you can't say stop. Uh, we've got to keep going here. And it's a very, very heated situation in the second act. Um, a, one, a wonderful experience in that cabin. Small, confined, and, and action-packed. John Carlo wanted everything to be realistic. In a Verismo opera, that's obvious. How realistic? I'd say that with his direction, it was very, very easy to come to a realistic solution for almost every problem on stage, and there were problems. I mean, problems that were fun. Problems like riding horses, uh, real ones. Um, I stayed on mine, Placido fell off once. Um, dealing with shooting guns, uh, dealing with fighting and, and, and getting hurt. John Carlo himself got, got hurt at one of the big fight scenes uh, in the first act. Uh, we had a team of professional fighters that taught all the participant uh, singers on the stage how to fight. Really, I mean, like in a real Western. He came charging up into the stage one day and, and showed them how to sweep a bunch of real glass uh, beer glasses um, from the tables and cut his hand open and was rushed to the hospital. Um, the cabin door fell down on my head one day, uh, the cabin door within the cabin, the one that led up into the attic where Dick Johnson um, hid himself after he'd been shot by the sheriff. Um, I was trying to get the thing down, ran behind it, and it flattened me right to the cabin floor. And uh, Mrs. Harrington, uh, our sponsor for this piece, was sitting out in the uh, auditorium and sprang up and said, Oh my God, is she dead? Well, I wasn't dead. I lived through it. But I had a lot of bruises and a lot of cuts and uh, a lot of fun. And the fun continued. Uh, these types of roles present other kinds of challenges, dramatically, especially vocally. I'm, I'm not here to say that singing Mozart or Strauss or Verdi was ever easier for me. They were just set on differently. As soon as you get into the Verismo area, you're dealing really with hand-on uh, action. In this particular case, really top action. But it was a challenge. It was a vocal challenge to be sure that technically nothing went wrong that could reflect on my singing within the run of the entire evening. And those were tough, long evenings, wonderful evenings. I'd say to any young singer taking on Puccini for the first time, young for me is somewhere between 25 and 30. If you get an offer to do something like Fanchula del West, be careful if you take it on. Uh, it takes over your life and it takes over your voice and it's very difficult to sing other composers from different uh, epics and eras uh, to fit them into the same throat that you're going to sing this this particular role with. Um, I've sung lots of wild things in my life. I had wonderful experiences with uh, conductors like uh, Leonard Bernstein who absolutely like Leonard Slatkin who was one of the greatest conductors I ever worked with and conducted us in the Fanchula and saved our lives many times on that big stage to be able to get through that piece over this huge wonderful orchestra. You need a conductor who can really lead you through your paces not let you schlep uh, keep you from, from taking too much time and, and enjoying things that might hurt you. Bernstein was the same way. Uh, things that sort of prepared me for Fanchula del West were rough writing uh, musical roles early in my education. I sang Anita in West Side Story. Um, I sang La Boheme with Leonard for the recording for uh, Deutsche Grammophon. Um, later, Man of La Mancha and, and uh, Gypsy and Hello Dolly in Austria. 
where you find that there are different te techniques that you have to work with um, and not compromise your voice. Um, you do it from time to time anyway, um, learning by doing, I would say. But all of these, these musical events early in my life led to helping me, I think, get through verismal roles without killing myself. I didn't do them too early. I waited with Fanchula. I think my advice to young singers would be take it easy for a long time and wait for that moment when you get a chance to do a role like Fanchula del West. It came to me at a time in my life where I think I was able to represent her with all the support and help of the wonderful cast and the conductor and the director, the entire Metropolitan Opera behind you. It couldn't have been a better situation. My thanks go out to Giancarlo Del Monaco for a production of a piece that uh, I think is difficult to pull off. Its scope is large. There's a lot to be considered. You're trying to represent the, the West. The West is, is huge. I think he did it. He did it with great effect and he did it with great emotional involvement to his, his actors and singers. And the rest came from that wonderful institution called the Metropolitan Opera, which has a way of making the bigger things even bigger and better. And for this, I think I will be thankful my entire life.